Edinburgh is the inspiring capital city of Scotland, where centuries of history meet a vibrant, cosmopolitan city in an unforgettable setting. It is the second most populous city in Scotland and the seventh most populous in the United Kingdom. Our first stop was at Edinburgh's waterfront, where the former Royal Judge Britannia is now permanently moored as an exhibition ship at Ocean Terminal, after being in service from 1954 to 1997. The Palace of Holyrood House, commonly referred to as Holyrood Palace, is the official residence of the British monarch in Scotland. Located at the bottom of the Royal Mile in Edinburgh, at the opposite end of Edinburgh Castle, Holyrood Palace has served as the principal residence of the kings and queens of Scots since the 16th century, and is a setting for state occasions and official entertaining. Queen Elizabeth spends one week in residence at Holyrood Palace at the beginning of each summer. According to legend, the abbey was founded in 1128, as the monastery of the Holy Rood or Holy Cross, but David I, King of Scots, following a miraculous intervention during a hunting expedition. During the 15th century, the Abbey Guest House was developed into a royal residence, and after the Scottish Reformation, the Palace of Holyrood House was expanded further. The Abbey Church was used as a parish church until the 17th century, and has been ruined since the 18th century. The fountain in the forecourt is a 19th century replica of the 16th century fountain at Linglithgow Palace. The iron work gates and ornamental screens were erected in the 1920s. The small garden building surviving from the 16th century is known as Queen Mary's bathhouse, although it is not thought to have been used for bathing. The abbey offered sanctuary to the pursued in times when minor theft could warrant a hanging and inflexible debt collectors would use violent means to intimidate their debtors. The sanctuary building is now used as a gift shop. Scotland's Parliament sits at the foot of Edinburgh's famous Royal Mile, in front of the spectacular Holyrood Park. Constructed from a mixture of steel, oak and granite, the complex building was hailed on opening as one of the most innovative designs in Britain today. Queen Elizabeth II opened the new building on 9 October 2004. Following our shots captured during the bus ride, to the Edinburgh Castle. The Museum of Edinburgh is said to be the city's treasure box with a maze of historic rooms crammed full of iconic objects from the capital's past, including curiosities like Greyfriars Bobby's collar and bowl and John Knox's spectacles case. An eastern defensive gateway known as the Netherbow Port once stood across the Royal Mile, separating the old town from the Canongate Burg. The area inside the Netherbow Gateway came to be known as the World's End. As far as the townspeople of Edinburgh were concerned, it was quite literally where their world ended.
Set in a historic landmark situated on the Royal Mile, the Inn on the Mile makes for an elegant haven for discerning travelers in Edinburgh. The property offers nine fully refurbished and stylishly furnished bedrooms. The Trunk Kirk is a former principal parish church. It is a well-known landmark on the Royal Mile. It was built in the 17th century and closed as a church in 1952. It is now standing empty and closed to the public. The National Museum of Scotland was formed in 2006 with the merger of the New Museum of Scotland and the adjacent Royal Museum. The two buildings retain distinctive characters, the one in a modern building, while the former Royal Museum was partially opened in 1866 with a Victorian Romanesque revival facade and a grand central hall of cast iron construction that rises the full height of the building. Stuffed on display is Dolly, the world's first cloned mammal. These are some of the 11 Lewis chessmen. In view, the Bedlam Theatre, housed in a neo-Gothic style church building. Greyfriars Bobby was a Sky Terrier who became known in 19th century Edinburgh for supposedly spending 14 years guarding the grave of his owner until he died himself on 14 January 1872. The Elephant House, with claims of being the birthplace of Harry Potter. St. Columbus by the Castle is a congregation of the Scottish Episcopal Church in central Edinburgh. The church is located on the south slope of Castle Hill and is protected as a Category B listed building. The church was constructed in 1846-1847 in an early English Gothic style. The Scotch Whiskey Heritage Center is a large tourist attraction located on Castle Hill immediately adjacent to the esplanade of Edinburgh Castle. The hub at the top of the Edinburgh's Royal Mile is the home of the Edinburgh International Festival and a central source of information on all the Edinburgh festivals. Its Gothic spire, the highest point in central Edinburgh, towers over the surrounding buildings below the castle. It was constructed between 1842 and 1845. What is now the hub was built for the Church of Scotland, both as a parish church and as a purpose-built General Assembly Hall. The tower with its six floors of hands-on exhibitions is still open to the public, making it the oldest purpose-built attraction in the city. The fascinating Camera Obscura show offers fantastic views of Edinburgh and five floors packed full of an amazing range of optical experiences which have been amusing visitors of all ages and nationalities since 1853. Of course, we visited the Edinburgh Castle, which offers fantastic views of the new town. Let's enjoy the views.
The Scott Monument is a Victorian Gothic monument to Scottish author Sir Walter Scott. It is the largest monument to a writer in the world. It stands in Princess Street Gardens, opposite the Jenner's Department Store on Princess Street and near the Edinburgh Waverley Railway Station, which is named for one of Scott's novels. The tower is 200 feet 6 inches high and has a series of viewing platforms reached by a series of narrow spiral staircases, giving panoramic views of central Edinburgh and its surroundings. It has been described as looking like a Gothic rocket ship. Adam Black was a Scottish publisher and politician. He founded the A and C Black Publishing Company and published the 7th, 8th and 9th editions of the Encyclopedia Britannica. The Scotsman Steps are an important part of Edinburgh's cityscape. They link the old and new towns. Edinburgh Waverley Railway Station, often simply referred to as Edinburgh, is the main railway station in the Scottish capital, covering an area of over 25 acres in the center of the city. It is the second largest mainline railway station in the United Kingdom in terms of area, the largest being London Waterloo. The Booking Hall at Waverley Station The Balmoral is a luxury five-star hotel and landmark in Edinburgh, known as the North British Hotel until the late 1980s. To assist passengers in reaching their train on time, The hotel tower's clock, visible from a considerable distance away, is traditionally said to be three minutes fast. In a UK first, Travel Lodge has opened a 96-room hotel above Edinburgh's largest top shop store in the city's prestigious retail heartland, Princess Street. Jenner's department store, now known simply as Jenner's, was the oldest independent department store in Scotland until its acquisition by House of Fraser in 2005. The building's caryatids were intended to show symbolically that women are the support of the house. Known as the Harrods of the North, it has held a royal warrant since 1911 and was visited by Queen Elizabeth II on the occasion of its 150th anniversary in 1988. In view, the Bank of Scotland building. It is a commercial and clearing bank with a history dating to the 17th century. It is the second oldest surviving bank in the United Kingdom and is the only commercial institution created by the Parliament of Scotland to remain in existence. These red-roofed, white-walled houses are part of the Ramsey Garden and were designed in 1893 in baronial style. They were originally intended to accommodate students, but today are one of Edinburgh's most desirable addresses. The Goose Pie House was built around 1740 by the poet Alan Ramsey. The name Goose Pie House comes from its unusual eight-sided shape similar to a pie tin. The Scottish National Gallery is the National Art Gallery of Scotland. It is located in a neoclassical building, first opened to the public in 1859. The gallery houses the Scottish National Collection of Fine Art, including Scottish and international art from the beginning of the Renaissance up to the start of the 20th century.
Princess Street Gardens is a public park in the center of Edinburgh, in the shadow of Edinburgh Castle. The gardens were created in two phases, in the 1770s and 1820s. East Princess Street Gardens, looking northeast from the mound, showing the Scott Monument, Balmoral Hotel and Waverley Station, with the North Bridge behind it. We just learned that the historic Playfair steps, which ran from Market Street to Princess Street Gardens and which were built in 1828, are being revamped as part of a 10,000 sterling pounds project, which will see the original stone repaired rather than replaced, so they keep the look of wear and tear that has built up over the years. The mound is an artificial hill in central Edinburgh, which connects Edinburgh's new town and old town. It was formed by dumping around 1,500,000 cartloads of earth excavated from the foundations of the new town into the drained Norlock, which forms today's Princess Street Gardens. The new college opened its doors in 1846 as a college of the Free Church of Scotland later of the United Free Church of Scotland, and from 1930s has been the home of the School of Divinity of the University of Edinburgh. Standing proud at the corner of Market Street and North Bank Street on the Mound, this bronze statue of a black watch soldier in Highland dress is dedicated to the memory of officers, non-commissioned officers and men of the Black Watch who fell in the South African War 1899-1902. Deacon William Brody, by day a cabinet maker, the top of his profession. When his father died in 1780, he inherited the family business, the home in Brody's clothes and £10,000, a sum that should have set him up for life. But he had some bad habits. He used to drink and gamble and he got not one but two mistresses. This lifestyle took quite a lot of his money, so by night he used to rob the houses and businesses in the area. Deacon's Brody's double life of good and evil was the inspiration of Robert Louis Stevenson's work, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Some of Edinburgh's most notable institutions have their premises on the mound, including the elegant domed headquarters of the Bank of Scotland and its museum, Museum on the Mound. Opened in September 2006, the Museum on the Mound is housed within the former Bank of Scotland's head office and is one of the only three banking museums in the UK. St. Giles Cathedral, more properly termed the High Kirk of Edinburgh, is the principal place of worship of the Church of Scotland in Edinburgh. Its distinctive crown steeple is a prominent feature of the city skyline and it dates from the late 15th century. The church has been one of Edinburgh's religious focal points for approximately 900 years. The present church dates from the late 14th century, though it was extensively restored in the 19th century. Today it is sometimes regarded as the mother church of Presbyterianism. The cathedral is dedicated to St. Giles, who is the patron saint of Edinburgh, as well as of cripples and lepers, and was a very popular saint in the Middle Ages. In the later 19th century, 
stained glass began to be put into the windows which had been largely clear or plain since the Reformation. Notable monuments include those of James Graham, first Marquis of Montrose, 1612-50, his arch enemy Archibald Campbell, first Marquis of Argyll, 1607-61, and the 19th century author Robert Louis Stevenson, 1850-94. Chance Encounter with Christian Amanpour The Mercat Cross is not the original, but a replacement built in the late 1800s. The original was removed in the mid-1700s. The Mercat Cross was the traditional site for public proclamations and is still used for that purpose to this day. It was also used as the site for public executions. This imposing statue of Adam Smith, philosopher and father of modern economics thinking, faces down the high street towards his hometown of Kirkcaldy. Although he is known to have several affairs, he never married or had any children. Flesh Market Close is a 2004 crime novel by Ian Rankin, and is named after this real close in Edinburgh, between the High Street and Market Street. We used this close to return to the meeting area where our tour bus was waiting for us. The Obelisk, the Martyr's Monument The Governor's House In the foreground, St. Andrew's House In the background, Nelson's Monument The Balmoral Hotel Shots captured during the bus ride back to Greenock. The Livingstone Monument. St. Andrew's and St. George's West Church. Edinburgh's new town is famous worldwide as a well-preserved example of Georgian planning and architecture. The new town is actually 200 years old but if compared to the old town, is a youngster. Alexander Graham Bell's house. The famous Georgian house is part of Robert Adams's masterpiece of urban design, Charlotte Square. It dates from 1796. 
when those who could afford it began to escape the cramped, squalid conditions of Edinburgh's old town to settle in the fashionable new town. It forms part of a terrace of houses on the south side of Charlotte Square. Scotland's first minister's official residence is next door. Waldorf Astoria Edinburgh, the Caledonian, opened in December 1903. The red sandstone facade has been a city landmark throughout the hotel's history. <laughs> <laughs>